the Fed has threatened to go all in on interest rates. What does that mean for gold and silver? Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Where will the gold price be in one year, in five years? What about silver? Well, if history is a guide, and it usually is, where precious metals heads largely depends on the actions of our Federal Reserve. History doesn't always repeat, but it sure does rhyme. I'll discuss gold a bit more than silver, because where gold heads, silver often follows. Gold is like the, the, the cruise ship that central banks like to board. Silver is the speedboat that many retail stackers ride. Both are important to stack for similar yet distinct reasons, which I'll summarize at the end of the video. Now, if we apply Fed history to gold, one scenario drops gold to $1,300 an ounce in five years. Ouch. <laughs> that might hurt some of you looking to turn a profit with precious metals. However, you new stackers and gold to silver ratio players would probably love to see that, right? Now, a second option sees gold surging to over $3,600 an ounce in the next five years. Wow. To project where gold prices could be in five years, 2027, we need to look at gold's response to past Federal Reserve hiking cycles in modern history, at least since Yankee's been alive. <laughs> in 1980, 1987, 1994, we saw quick interest rate increases by our central bank. And in 1977, 1999, 2004, and 2016, we saw slow interest rate increases by the Fed. Let's take the slow cycle first. When that happened, gold went up 115% on average in five years. What do I mean by slow? Well, uh, incremental rate hikes like uh, 25 basis points, that's 0.25%. Uh, and a smaller number of hikes too within that first year of increasing rates. Also a relatively lower endpoint for the federal funds rates when it stopped. So gradual, nice and easy, nothing overly dramatic. Slow is historically very good for gold and by extension, silver. Today, that 115% rise in gold would mean a price of gold per ounce over $3,600 by 2027. However, you usually have to ride out a bit of a pullback within that first year of the rate hikes. On average, there is a maximum drop in the gold price of just 2% in that first year, and then gold just really takes off. Again, this is the slow rate increase cycle. So what about the fast hiking cycle? Well, that's when the Fed historically launches the tightening with an initial increase of over 50 basis points and then goes really hard in that first year, exceeding 300 basis points in total. That's 3% total rate hike. This triggers a deep sell-off in gold. If you look at when our central banks did this, 1980, 87, 94, gold's price dropped an average of 32% over a five-year period. In 2022, that would translate to gold tumbling to the $1,300 an ounce uh, value that I mentioned by 2027. Silver gets dragged down as well, and stocks get dragged down too. They suffer an average of about a 10% drop. Now, our first Fed rate hike was back in March of this year, and it was a 25 basis point hike, 0.25. Okay, that's less than the 50 basis points that usually uh, typifies a fast hiking cycle. But the next three rate hikes came frequently with 50 basis points, then a 75 basis point, and then another 75 basis point rate hike. That's a total of 200 and 25 basis points for the year so far, 2.25%. And that is on track to be a fast hiking cycle. 
When you love silver as much as me, it's really easy to get carried away. Sometimes I just can't keep my hands off of a good deal. So when SD Boolean told me that they wanted to give away some silver for free, I was happy to lend my hands, I mean voice, for the cause. Now how much silver are they giving away, you ask? Boom, yes, 500 brand new Silver Eagle coins will be going to one of you. Just click the link below and enter for your chance to be the next big winner. Yep, okay, got it. That hike in interest rates means consumers are now paying an extra $225 in interest on every $10,000 they have in debt. That's a lot, and it could go higher. Many economists are expecting the Federal Reserve to continue with its regime of rate hikes, but what will the next one be? We don't know. However, August's jobs report have led many to believe that another 75 basis points is likely in this month of September, followed by even more in the last two Fed meetings of the year. That would blow right past that 300 basis points that marks a fast tightening cycle and make this one quite momentous. Frankly, guys, it has been more aggressive uh, than I predicted. I thought a pause, a, a reversal, would commence before hitting 2%. I thought that because I didn't think Jerome had the stomach to destroy the markets and crush the economy. And so far, I've been wrong. He's talking like Paul Volcker, the Fed chairman in the late 1970s and 80s. And in all frankness, Jerome Powell is actually doing the right thing by raising interest rates, albeit too little too late in my opinion. We need interest rates to go up. They've been artificially too low for too long and that has poisoned our real economy. It's stimulated bad investments, wild gambling with things like crypto and NFTs. It has built enormous bubbles in the stock market, in the real estate market. Guys, there is no way that my house should be worth as much as it is. No way. It has caused zombie companies to flourish when they should have been decapitated. And it has allowed market manipulation to run rampant with unprecedented stock buybacks. Guys, we actually need interest rates to go significantly higher. We're talking double digit territory to have a shot at taming real inflation that you know you and I feel every day. This would flush out the malinvestments. This would detox the monetary addiction we have in the markets. However, the markets, they've, they've been expecting you know, for the Fed to reverse course. Actually, they've been hoping that the Fed would reverse course. You know, pause the rate hikes and then cut rates again. Why? Because they're addicted to cheap money. This is the Fed pivot they want and it hasn't happened yet. But will it? Yeah, <laughs> I believe it's still coming. And it's not going to come after a victory over inflation a la Paul Volcker. Mm -mm. I believe the Fed will pivot long before inflation is tamed. Why do I think that? Well, because if Jerome continues to channel Paul Volcker and keeps on raising rates, we are going to have a financial crisis that will make 2008 look like a Sunday school picnic. Today, we have many times the debt that we had back in 2008. Guys, everyone's levered up. All those too big to fail banks that were bailed out back in 2008, they're a lot bigger now. And when job losses hit, and they're going to, during this recession, the defaults will start to take off. And there is no bank bailouts coming. No TARP 2.0. Inflation is too high. And with the Fed tightening, that means banks are going to fail. Bank customers are actually going to lose money this time. Not just not just the stock and bond holders, depositors like you. All right, now this is where a lot of people say, oh, Yankee, you're just fear-mongering. Come on, dude. It's not going to happen. 
What about the FDIC? Oh, okay. Well, the FDIC won't have the money unless it gets it from the Fed. And the Fed isn't going to be handing out money if it's fighting inflation. That's the bind that they're in. And that's why I think this latest tightening cycle by the Fed with interest rates is going to end. If they don't, it's going to lead to a massive financial crisis. Can you imagine waking up and finding your stock portfolio cut in half? Say sayonara to the wealth effect. And in my opinion, before that even plays out, there is going to be like a pitchfork and torch riot. President Biden, the Congress, uh, institutional investors, Joe Sixpack with their plummeting 401k statements will demand that the government and by extension the Fed step in and do something now. Maybe they're I don't know, simply trying to gain some altitude with interest rates before this happens. So they have room to cut them, but it's coming. It's also a midterm election year. And the administration cannot allow the economy to enter a crisis before November. I think the next three months are going to be crazy. We shall see. I'm still buying gold and silver in small tranches on each dip, but I'm ready for some big purchases when the time is right. It may take until next year. I don't know. But in my opinion, the pause and pivot is coming. And that is when this incredible buying opportunity for precious metals will cease to exist. Gold is a dollar crisis hedge. Silver is a dollar collapse hedge. That's why twice my precious metals value is in gold rather than silver. But I stack both of them, and I think you should too. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and check out the description of this video. That's where all kinds of extra info and goodies are. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.